Hi guys and welcome to the mortgage and rental income calculator template. Now, if you're planning to take on a mortgage or if you're trying to rent out an apartment or something, it's super important that you plan your monthly cash ins and cash outs. And this template helps you do just that. So again, let's have a brief look at the different sheets that we're featuring in this template. We actually only have one support sheet and it's called mapping. Now mapping is all gray, nothing for you to change in here. The mapping sheet essentially translates payment frequencies into numerical values that we need to take into consideration for the monthly calculations. Also, we can later specify whether we pay a loan at the beginning or at the end of the period. And then just some cosmetics. Are you planning in square feet or square meters? So let's take a look at the first sheet, which is mortgage calculation. I want to start off with this one. So let's say you want to take on a loan. In this particular case, the loan amount is coming from the sheet monthly rental income. Let's take a brief look at this one. Essentially, you're planning the real estate object. How much do you need to pay for it? What's your down payment? And what's going to be your total capital required? You see that 24, um, 247,500 is going to translate into the mortgage calculation sheet, which is right here. And now you enter the interest rate that the bank is offering you. You can say, okay, so I'm getting 2.7% in interest. And at the same time, my duration of the loan is going to be, say, 30 years. So based on that, and you can specify whether you want to pay at the beginning or the end of the period, and whether you want to pay monthly or quarterly, you're going to get a rate that you need to pay each month, each quarter, or let's say semi-annually. So let's go with a monthly one, okay? Roughly $1,000 that you need to pay each month. Your amortization schedule is shown right here. As we progress throughout the years, you will see that this balance, of course, decreases because you're paying back the loan and you're also paying back the interest. But let's take a look at what's actually the split between the interest and the loan that you're paying back. So let's scroll down a little bit. Here we have our payment schedule. Now, this all in gray, this will update automatically. No need for you guys to take action here. And the same holds true for these over here because you see that this is the total payment due, roughly $1,000 each month. And the first month, you're only paying back a bit of the principal. You're not paying any interest yet. But then as we move on, the total payment due will stay the same, but as you can see here, you're paying back a little more of the principal loan amount, which is the 247500. And your interest payments are going down. Now, what is the logic behind that? Of course, the bank wants to get paid first and your interest payments are their profit. So they have a keen interest on making sure that the interest is paid first to them because that for them, that's their business, right? So if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you see that the principal amount continuously increases each month while the interest payments decrease. The total will always stay the same. And very interestingly, here, here in column I, you see the closing balance. So after each month, this is what's left to be paid. And if we go down, you see, you're ending up with a balance of zero after 360 periods. Periods being calculated by means the number of years. So depending on what I enter in here, the number of periods will change. And then also I could say, hmm, you know what, I actually want to pay end of period. And then you will see that even in the first month, you have to pay interest because that means that you've already run a bit of the loan and that's why you need to pay back interest. So this is it for the mortgage calculation. That's planning your expense side. Let's look at the monthly rental income. Say that we're purchasing this and at the same time, we also want to rent it out and we're getting a cash in from this. So this is what we usually start with, right? So we're planning in square meters. That's the size. This is going to be the purchase price. We have some additional expenses that we need to pay for. You know, like the land registry, we have a realtor coming in. These are all arbitrary numbers. Everything in green means you can change. Now, in the end, 
we can specify a monthly rental price. This is going to be $800. This is just our decision, but we can, of course, change it as we see fit. And it's also going to give us a monthly gross yield. Now, what's the monthly gross yield? It's essentially your rent income multiplied by 12 divided by the purchase price. This is just a very, very common KPI that is used in real estate investment to sort of gauge the attractiveness of renting out an apartment. So if we look at this one right here, we of course have an income schedule. Income schedule meaning that each and every month we have monthly rental income coming from our rent that we charge with the payment dates. So let's say we charge rent or we receive rent every month on the 24th. Now then we need to have you know something for the chart. You can disregard this as again, this is green and uh, this is gray. So no need for you to, to change anything about this. But then it may be the case that sometimes you have additional income or additional expenses. Let's say in the first month, the tenant is moving in and they're placing a deposit with you. Now this of course stays with you and at the end of the tenure of the tenant, you need to pay back that deposit. At the same time, let's say we're getting a new kitchen sometime here in November. So we need to plan for an additional cash out of 2000 for this new kitchen. That means it's going to calculate our total monthly cash inflow and also calculate our accumulated income, which will then translate up here into the chart. You see these bar charts reflect our monthly cash inflow. Now here, of course, it's negative because we have to invest in a new kitchen. At the same time here in June 2021, we're planning with the tenant moving out again, so we need to pay back the deposit. But as you can see here, we have quite a nice trend upwards when it comes to our accumulated income or savings each month. In the end, combining monthly rental income and your mortgage payments, you get a total cash flow, which is your rental cash inflow, your mortgage cash outflow. Again, no need for you to change anything about this. And here you see the net cash impact each month. So you see that in, on a regular month, you're actually $44 short because your mortgage payments are just a slightly a slight bit higher than your cash in each month. And with that, you can essentially plan a full real estate investment and see whether it makes sense for you.